Hey guys, welcome back to Phil Plays TCG. Today, I'm going to be talking about a topic that actually has been requested quite frequently um, in a lot of my videos, talking about the basics of each color, uh, well, how the how each color wants to play, stuff like that. So you know what? I think that's a cool topic. I thought, why not throw my two cents in? Um, if you have some different, different opinions, definitely let me know in the comments down below. But basically, the topic of this video is going to be basics of each color, play style of each color, and in my opinion, the weaknesses of each color. I want this to kind of be quick to the point, you know, for new players hopping into the game to figure out what color is best suited for them and their play style. If you want to play meta or if you want to play for fun, this video hopefully will help you make that decision. Uh, before we get fully into the video here, just want to let you know we are still on that grind to 2,000 subs. So if you haven't already and you are watching this video, because it turns out about 84% of you guys are not subscribed who are watching my content, which is crazy to me. If you like the content here, want to hit that subscribe button. It's a free way to help support the channel and helps me uh, keep pumping out these videos here. So with that out of the way, typical YouTube stuff, let's get into the topic. So like I said, Basics of each color. We're gonna go in the play style of each color and then the weaknesses. This will be a pretty quick one, uh, but let's get started. First of all, let's start with green. The boogeyman of set one. Uh, green is basically the number one color in the meta. Uh, green Gohan and green Broly are dominating the ranked uh, ladder on uh, the online, uh, online client for Dragon Ball Super Fusion World. Gohan, Broly, and even Androids, uh, they're all fantastic decks. Uh, in my opinion, they are a bit overtuned, and I am not alone in that sentiment. A lot of the community also agrees that green out the out of the gate is just a bit much. Uh, but basically, green green's whole gameplay is uh, focusing on overwhelming your opponent with tall bodies early on. Because green ramps, uh, you essentially on turn three can go to four, and then on turn four go to six energy. So by turn five, you've almost doubled your energy from turns three to five. Um, green also has a bit of life control. Um, you can actually, uh, but what I mean by life control is I probably could have phrased that a little differently, but basically there is a card in green that allows you to gain a life on play on top of having a 35K body uh, because you are able to ramp so quickly, you're able to play your bigger bodies much quicker uh, and overwhelm your opponent. Um, in my opinion, green also has some of the best defense cards in the game. Uh, you have things like Gigantic Meteor, which is a one cost 25k defense card that as long as you have six or more energy, you get that extra defense, um, which is just nutty uh, because green can ramp so quickly. It's almost guaranteed you're always going to have that card online. You also have cards like Instant Kamehameha, which is a free 15k boost. All you have to do is discard one energy which already, if you're ramping so much, getting rid of one energy is not the worst thing in the world. But you also have cards like 5-Drop Goku that allows you to essentially negate that cost. Um, and because it is not a once-per-turn ability, you can continuously abuse that ability by playing multiple instant Kamehameha, and you're always going to get that card uh, back onto your board with Goku's ability. Because, Goku says, when a card from your energy is discarded due to a skill whether that's your leader skill like Gohan or Instant Kamehameha, you get to replace that energy from the top of your deck. So there is no penalty for it. It's ridiculous. Uh, all three leaders in green have a way to boost themselves up. Androids is that it uh, once you have six or more energy on your turn, your Android leader gets uh, 10,000 attack power, making him a 30K attack power on swing. Gohan, by trashing one energy, allows you to boost yourself up by 15k, and that is on your turn or your opponent's turn. So, on top of that 5-drop Goku's ability, you're essentially always going to get a free 15k buff. Insane. And then finally, Broly, uh, once per turn, uh, draw one card, place one of your uh, sorry, place one of your energy in your drop area, draw one card, and this card gets 5k power for the turn. So Broly becomes a 30k, and he draws one. But with that Goku, you're just going to replace that energy again. It's crazy. Um, like I said, green right now is dominating the meta so far in Japan and in America. It, it's just, it's crazy. 
it's likely that green will see a hit in the future unless they drastically increase the power of the other car uh, other colors in this game but basically if you want to win big on the online uh, client play green if you want to win in real life more than likely you're going to want to play green but green does have a slight weakness that we will talk about in a bit uh, moving on to the next color here we have blue blue personally is my favorite color to play in this game it's also my favorite color to play in masters but besides the point blue unfortunately if you talk to a lot of people they would say blue is the worst color currently in the game uh, you have leaders like vegeta goku black and future trunks blue's whole gameplay style is card recycling being able to recur cards from your discard pile back to your hand uh, to be used multiple times it also has this weird focus on having seven or less cards in hand in order to get a lot of abilities whether those are buffing your current characters or uh, drawing an additional card or recycling cards from your discard pile uh, as well as uh, being able to draw extra cards uh, blue does draw a lot of cards um, if you play your cards right uh -huh. uh, blue is also more combo focused uh, there's a lot of cards that can boost your characters up uh, by playing a certain way seeing certain lines of play and uh, that kind of goes into the whole recycling thing um, play a card like for example the most infinite loop in the game is the one cost peel off as long as you have seven or less cards in your hand when you play peel off you grab any one cost earthling type card from your discard pile back to your hand that includes extra cards and character cards so if you have seven or less cards you can continuously loop peel off into peel off into peel off uh, or Final Hope Slash. That's a very popular card in blue decks right now. Being able to constantly use Final Hope Slash to bounce Peel Off back to your hand, to play Peel Off again, to grab uh, Final Hope Slash back from your discard pile. It's a really cool loop that blue has available. And one of the best things going for it. Uh, blue also focuses on bouncing cards back to hand or the bottom of the deck with cards like Sinister Sickle um, and Final Flash. You also have a couple battle cards that bounce cards back to hand as well as bottom of deck. They're really, really cool. Uh, bouncing cards to hand is not as good as bouncing to the bottom of the deck, but it can work with disrupting your opponent's tempo, uh, giving you a little bit of uh, edge in that game. Uh, blue is really, really fun to play. But unfortunately, blue is, like I said, the worst color by many in this game. It, when that will change, I'm not sure. Hopefully with the release of set two, blue will see a major buff. But for now, I really like blue. Uh, I have the trunks deck built. Uh, I have my gold marker for it and my alt art leader. Uh, if you are interested in playing blue trunks at all, I do have a deck list talking about my winning deck list that I use for celebrations um, and a deck that I have found success in the online client. Unfortunately, green is still a really big uh, threat for the deck. So if you're interested, check that out. It's a video on the channel. Uh, next up, we have yellow. Uh, remember when I talked about green having a slight weakness? Yes, yellow exploits green's only weakness, which is going wide. Uh, yellow is the best at going wide in this game because it has a lot of on-play effects that allow you to play free, uh, free cards from your hand onto the board. Or by playing a card, you can restand to energy or restand energy, whatever you use to pay for it, uh, essentially making that card free. Uh, the, basically, um, it is the best at going wide by playing free bodies uh, my, and manipulating board state uh, by tapping things down, uh, continuing to tap them down or not allowing them to restand during your opponent's turn. Uh, this is the color that is primarily uh, the home of the Ginyu Force and the Frieza Clan. The Ginyu Force is a very powerful engine uh, for going wide because you can play a lot of cards for free. Uh, for example, three cost Ginyu, as long as you have three or more uh, Ginyu Force or Frieza Clan cards, sorry, Frieza Army cards on your board, you can play Raccoon, play two drop Ginyu, from your, I'm sorry, I probably skipped that whole thing. As long as you have three or more uh, Frieza's army cards on board, you can then play a two-cost Ginyu Force card from your hand. Uh, you play the two-cost Ginyu, which on play restands two energy. So you play three for Raccoon, play Ginyu for free, restand two energy, play Burter for two. 
So for three energy, you've played three 20k bodies on board. And 20 is a great number in this game. 20k is a great number in this game because your opponent's leader on their awakened side is exactly 20k. So swing, swing, swing you're gonna be dealing a lot of damage early on. The problem is with a lot of those decks is that your hand size does tend to run pretty low because you're playing a bunch of cards from your hand. Uh, so if your opponent has any way of clearing board, because there are a lot of great board clearing cards in green and in uh, red, um, and even some cards in blue, that if they clear your board, you may run out of steam. But Yellow is a really interesting color. There's a lot of great ways to play it. Uh, you have Ginyu, uh, which primarily runs the Ginyu Force package, and he's a pretty awesome leader to do so. And he has squeaked out some wins in the Japanese meta, as well as a couple wins here in the American meta. Uh, you have the Starter Deck Frieza, which is a really interesting card, uh, because at the end of your turn, you can just restand two of any of your battle cards. No cost requirements, no nothing. So you can swing in with blockers and then restand them at the end of the turn. Frieza is definitely more of the conservative, slower, more defense-based uh, yellow deck. And, of course, we have his big brother, Cooler. Cooler is definitely the more aggro version, um, if you compare Frieza and Cooler. Uh, his ability is discard one card from your hand to grab one... Uh, sorry, to choose a battle card with the cost of four or less that has the Frieza clan in its special traits and restand it. Or you can switch one of your energy to rest mode. Uh, sorry, to active mode. It is... It's such a huge difference between Frieza and Cooler. Frieza, it's a two, restand two cards for free, while Cooler, you have to discard one. But Cooler does have the critical skill on the front side to apply early pressure. And Cooler's ability to restand uh, some big, heavy swingers like the four drop Frieza is very powerful. Uh, so, yellow, honestly, is in, uh, is in the race to be the second best color in the game because of all the amazing tech options that it has, and it is one of the best colors to go into the very dominant green color, uh, especially into green Gohan and androids. This color is very good. Unfortunately, Broly kind of puts an end to that because the additional 5K that Broly has on his backside uh, makes it so a lot of your going wide swing 20, 20, 20 attacks don't do anything because you have to combo something additional from your hand, which drains your hand even more. Uh, so... It's, it's a weird thing. Green into Gohan, sorry, yellow into Gohan, pretty good. Yellow into Broly, not so good. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and finally, the last color we're talking about here is red. Not a lot of talk about red. Red, I feel like, is a very, you know, to the point, uh, very easy color to play, uh, but maybe difficult to master, if that makes sense. Uh, you have two Gokus in this set, Super Saiyan Blue U7 Goku, uh, Super Saiyan Goku from the Star Deck and Beerus. Uh, basically, Red's whole focus and playstyle in this game is reducing and boosting power. Uh, more so reducing your opponent's battle cards power to clear them off board or to lower their power enough that your lower cost bodies can start swinging into their bigger bodies. Red also has an abundance of battle cards with the critical ability, which if they take a life, that card goes to the discard pile instead of your hand, which is a very annoying thing early on in the game. And um, the, the uh, color primarily has Universe 7 and Universe 6 cards. Uh, there is no Universe 6 leader, unfortunately. I don't understand why we didn't get one. And with the reveal that set two going forward, we're only getting one character and one leader per color. And red has been announced to be another red Universe 7 Goku, uh, we're not going to be seeing a Universe 6 leader, at least for a, uh, for a while. But right now, like, Red ha is a really cool deck to play, and it's actually pretty cheap to play, uh, minus having the uh, Secret Rare, which I forgot to mention. Red also has a Secret Rare Goku, uh, which is pretty good for uh, clinching games at the very end. Uh, you have decks like Universe 7, Goku, which primarily focuses on playing as many U7 characters as possible, and they all get a 5k buff as long as your leader is awakened. Uh, only on your turn, though. Beerus is a more control version of Red, being able to swing crit on its front side, and then once awakened, it can give anything on your opponent's board minus 10k once per turn. It can help clear blockers, uh, low to the ground bodies, or help take out bigger threats. And finally, Starter Goku is just a very middle of the road uh, leader, being able to work with 
generically all red good cards. It has the ability of once per turn, give one of your battle cards 5k, and that can be used on your turn and your opponent's turn. So essentially it is a free 5k buff that you can use for attack or defense. It's pretty neat, and a lot of people are running the U6 package in Starter Goku. So, it's a really cool deck. I've been playing it a lot. There's a video on the channel um, that I was that I did with Cody Wojcik. Uh, he's been a champion of this deck, trying to let people know it is the best red deck in the format, uh, other than Beerus. He's not a huge fan of U7 Goku. You can go watch that video and see for yourself why Starter Goku is the best red leader in the game right now. And um, that's pretty much it for the colors here. Uh, I th at least I just I can't think of anything more. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Uh, this is a really fun one actually to make. Uh, so thank you so much to the uh, viewers who were asking for me to take a shot at this topic. Um, and I just want to let you know, uh, we are still on that grind to 2000 subs, which the, the the growth in the channel has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much to every single person that has helped make this work for me. I, I've been having so much fun streaming uh, and making more content for you guys. Dragon Ball Super Fusion World has been awesome to play. And if you are subscribed to the channel and you do want to help support the channel in any other ways, uh, we do offer channel memberships here for only $1 a month. Gets you access to any video that I put up the same day I upload it. So you can get it first before anyone else uh, instead of having to wait a couple days for it to come out. And it's only a dollar. So if you if you think it's valuable, that's up to you. Um, and. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel and don't want to be a member, that's totally fine too. Uh, but like and subscribing uh, the uh, to the channel is a free way to help me out. So either way, I really, really appreciate all the support and love I've been getting lately. Streaming has been incredibly fun. I think I might try to do it at least once a week going forward. I just got a new job, but I'm still going to try to stream at least once a week on the Fusion World client. And uh, we'll just kind of see what happens there. But hey, once again, thank you for all the amazing support lately. Thank you for checking out this video. And, to, and until the next video, take care, guys.